Hey everybody, today your auto runs through Yamatai, which is a gorgeous new production from Days of Wonder. And I'm going to be doing a two player run through today so you can see what it's all about. Although, before I get going, as always, please turn on the Klingon subtitle channel right now so you can be appraised of any rules goofs I might make along the way. Right, have you done that? Then let's go. Welcome to this beautiful archipelago, this collection of islands where we have come as master builders to impress Queen Hamiko by building a whole bunch of buildings all over the place. Although to be able to build on all these islands, we first have to get resources out to them. Which means we've got to deploy an entire fleet of resource carrying ships. And as you can see, they start over here, they work their way inward. The more ships we've got spread all over the place, the more buildings we can build and score points. And along the way, we can also get favors of specialists who will give us special powers. There's so much going on here. Uh, let's stop talking about it and let's start doing it. So it's set up. Each player has 10 coins right from the get-go and a whole bunch of buildings they want to build. The fewer players, the more buildings you have you can build. And your little player mat here also is a very, very nice uh, reminder of how every round works. There's five steps on your turn. You are first going to grab one of these ship tiles that will give you access to ships that are full of goods waiting to bring them out into the archipelago and each one of them, or almost all of them, will give you one special power as well. And uh, as a general rule, the higher the number, um, the better stuff you'll get. The better ships you'll get, the better special power you'll get. But that means the slower you will go. After you have done that, we, everybody then gets the opportunity to buy or sell one ship. If you need some more money, you can uh, sell a ship. If you need another ship, you can buy it if you got the money on hand. And there's a little reminder here that green ones, uh, bamboo are the cheapest, and oh, I forget what the colors mean. What does red mean? Oh, not that it matters, but yeah, yeah. It's a uh, Clay, which is, well, the most valuable thing in the world is gold, which cannot be bought or sold. There, you know, you got, you got to find other ways to get gold. But then you got clay, which is worth four coins, and where'd that list go? Stone, which is black for three, and then wood, and then bamboo. All right, so you can buy or sell one ship ever on your turn. That's it. Then you move on to step three, where you are going to deploy the ships you've got, uh, either the one you bought or the ones you got from the, uh, the, the tile you took originally. And after you have deployed ships, you can either build on one of the islands that you have reached with those ships, or you can take one of these favor tiles. Or I forget what they're called. What are they called? They're called culture tokens. You can take one of these culture tokens from one of the islands you've reached with your ships that you play. And uh, then there's a little bit of a reminder here about if you build a building, how you score points and make money off of it. Then at the end of your turn, if you have any ships you haven't deployed, you get to store one of them. If you have more ships you haven't deployed, then you start storing them here and you'll lose points at the end of the game for not having used them. And then the last thing you do on your turn is if you've got some of these culture tokens, you can take a pair and recruit any one of these five specialists or instead of a pair three different ones and you can see they're all over here you know waiting to be collected on all these islands and that's your turn then it's the next player's turn so I am the first player you can see in a two-player game uh, you, you know Jen's the blue player I'm the orange player you randomize them a little bit and hey yeah, look at me I'm the first player and the second player and then you do the same thing just kind of shuffle them up and oh what I oh yep there you go I'm the first player and the second player so it's gonna be me, Jen, me, Jen. But you know what? It could have been me, Jen, Jen, me. And in later rounds, it could be me, me, Jen, Jen. But in this first round, it's me, Jen, me, Jen, because that's how it randomly shook out. Okay. So I'm going to go. First of all, I take one of these face-up tiles. And like I said, the higher the value, the slower I'm going to be in the next round, but the more powerful a resource I get. And I'm looking at this one, number nine. This will give me access to one stone and one lumber ship, and it will give me the special power of being able to build a building this turn for one less resource than normal. That sounds pretty cool. Although I got to ask, will I actually be able to build something? These up here are the five buildings uh, that randomly showed up at the beginning of the game. And this one requires three bamboo. Although I would only need two bamboo if I have this special power. But the problem is, this isn't going to give me bamboo ships. This is going to give me brown and black. So if I look at this one over here, well, hey, this one's not too bad. 
This requires three black. I'd get one black from here, and later on, yeah, let's heck, let's go for it. Let's go for building that building. So, uh, what am I going to do? I am going to choose this action, and you're supposed to take it and put it over on your board along with the uh, guy who represents your turn. But Jen, I found we just go on ahead and do it like this. So hey, here I, I went. There you go. So, and I now take a stone and a lumber ship. Now. I can buy, I can sell one of these for some money. And remember, I started with 10. Instead of that, I'm going to spend some money. I'm going to spend three of my starting 10 capital to buy another stone ship. Alrighty. Then I'm going to move on over here and I'm going to deploy these. Now, I don't have to deploy them all. Now, I can store one of them, but if I don't, if I, if I have more, uh, one of them stores, one would start losing me half a point for every one I don't use. But uh, what the heck, I'm going to go ahead and uh, deploy them all. So. I am planning on building with this discount right here. So where do I want to build? Where do I want to build? Um, right. Well, actually, the thing is, you can't build on an island until the culture token has been removed. And all these culture tokens were randomly placed out, including these ones that have the little mountains on them that indicate that there's a mountain on this island, which means it's more prestigious to build on these islands that have mountains. But you can't build on one until somebody, you or somebody else, clears the culture token out. But randomly, there's three, one, two, three that are empty. So this island's just waiting to be built on. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I am going to go on ahead and deploy um, my stone ship and my stone ship. And what the heck, I'll deploy my... I, you know what, I don't have to. Me putting this out is only helping Jen. Um, because once I've deployed the, these ships, you might think, oh, I, I kind of have a sense of ownership. There, the, I, you know, I, I took the time and effort to get these things deployed to send stone and lumber off. Everybody has access to that. So me putting this out here isn't benefiting me. So I don't think I'm going to. I might, uh, I'll probably save it, which means next turn I could use it to benefit me and not Jen. Or heck, I could sell it for some money if I need to. So I'm only going to deploy these two stone ships. And so I am done with that. And now after that, I can either claim a culture token. In this case, I could claim this one or this one because the ships I deployed are next to these two islands. Or I can build. And since there's an empty place here and um, the stone ship I deployed, I'm going to build right there. So I look over at the, ship, the buildings I can build. Remember, there was this one. This is going to be worth three points at the end of the game. It requires three stone ships. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, I've already messed up. All right, I do need to use this wood. Because uh, I need to go like this. I need to put the wooden one out here to kickstart me in, in this starting position. Then you, you have to snake. You can't say, oh, I'm putting one over here and one over here. You, you know, Once you make one go, they all have to continue from where you started. So this stone goes here. This stone goes here. Now, this island has access to two stone ships. These two islands have access to a stone ship and a lumber ship. I needed to use that lumber to get out here. So that this island has two stone. Normally I would need three, but I've got the discount. So I will successfully build this building. Boom. And I will take this and keep it face down. At the end of the game, I will tally up our score for everything we built. So now building gives you some rewards. And you're reminded of it over here. If, uh, well, in addition to you know the three points I've got, if I um, build next to one of the fancy palaces or gates, and nobody's built any of those yet, but if I build next to one of those, and you can see they're waiting to be built, they score more points, they're much more difficult to build. But once they're built, everybody wants to build their own buildings next to it because you get a point for building next to one of these big prestigious buildings. I haven't built next to a big prestigious building, so I don't get any points off of that. You also get points if you build on a mountain. I have not built on a mountain, so I don't get any points to that. Um, so in this case, all I'm going to get is the three points for having built this building. No bonus points for building on a mountain or what have you. And then the last thing, I can also earn money um, by building one of my own buildings, but only if it's part of a chain. I think the rules call him a group, but we call him a chain. So this first guy, he, he's not in a chain yet. But later on, if I build another building, and let's say this culture gets cleared out and then I build a building here, I've started to build a chain of my own buildings. Every building in a chain will score me one buck. Not a point, but a buck. So you're really, you know, and so then later on I clear this culture out and I build another one, and then you know that'll score me one, two, three bucks. So the bigger the chain gets, the more money you can make. All right, 
But of course, you can't. I can't build in these spaces until somebody, me or Jen, clears those prestige or those culture tokens out. So anyway, so I, I built here, and all I did was make one buck. And I, but I got to do it on the cheap because I took this special power. Right. So now, at the end of my turn, if I had any boats left over, I could store one of them and basically burn the rest. Uh, but that's not the case. I used all three of my boats. And now, at the end of my turn, if I've collected any culture, I could use them to recruit a uh, specialist. But I didn't collect culture tokens. Instead, I um, built something. So that was the end of my turn. And now it is Jen's turn. She'll go on ahead and do one of these remaining actions. Let's see here. And um, you know, if we were playing a long game, we would actually, I'd put my guy on here to indicate I'm doing it. And then I say, oh, look, he's all done. Um, just in case later on I forget, wait, am I doing this one now or this one? If, if it gets really complicated. But anyway, so what is Jen going to do? So she's got these remainders. She, all right, so this would get her stone and bamboo, or I'm sorry, lumber and bamboo, and the special power is it would let her switch the position of any two culture tokens. Because maybe, remember, you try to get a pair, and so maybe you've got one blue, and then you want another blue. So you'd say, and you're about to build here, you'd, uh, you know, and you built off in this direction, you swap this, and then, hey, I could pick up a blue and another blue eventually. Yay. Because you're trying to get pairs. Or instead, you're trying to get different ones instead. But ideally, you want to get pairs, because then you only need two guys instead of two cultures instead of three to recruit the specialist. So that lets you swap stuff. This lets you swap the position of boats. You're about to build over here, and most of the resources you need are there, except for a stone. So there's like an extra bamboo. You pick it up and swap it with the stone, and then suddenly, boom, you've got the stone you need, because it lets you swap the position of any two boats that have already been deployed. This one, number one, whoever takes this is guaranteed going to be the first player next round, because they're super fast. Um, so that's great. But the downside is you don't get any special power, and you only get one bamboo boat. So you're not doing very much. And then this last one over here is um, get one lumber. And the special power is, oh, by the way, uh, as soon, let's see, do these refill at the end of the round or do they refill right now? Oh, shucks. I think they refill at the end of the round. Let me double check that. DTT, professional, uh, turnover track. Yeah, yeah, they refill at the end of the round. Yep. So. This last one, I could claim one of these, not build it right now, but, and you know, this is actually Jen's turn, because it's, uh, she could claim one of these and then hold on to it to build it later. Because, of course, these are first come, first serve. And when you put these things out here, um, anybody can build the building using anybody's boats. So if you're wanting to build up for something, it's not a bad idea to reserve it. But at the end of the game, you will lose points for any um, tiles you reserved that you did not actually build. So what does Jen want? Hmm. Well, if she wants to build this turn, I don't think she's going to, though. And now here's the interesting thing. If, well, if you say she ends up getting a couple of, of ships, she will have to start from one of these remaining start points, or she could continue, um, she could continue from where there are existing ships. So she could from here jump right to here, here, or here. But to continue from this space, the first boat that Jen would have to place would have to be stone. None of these offer stone, and stone is expensive. It would cost three bucks. So, um, you know, if Jen really wanted to make a big push to get deeper into the island, um, you know, by building off of this, she'd need to spend extra money to get a stone since there's none out there. But instead, I think what Jen will do... Let's see. Oh, oops, by the way. Sorry. This was uh, blank too. Ah! Right, right, right. I totally forgot. This, like the other ones, this was the fourth blank space. This mountain was available right from the get-go. Durr. Which means I should have gone like this. I should have, on my turn, built like this, let's say. Because then if I built on this mountain, because it was empty, I just didn't set myself up right, I did score one extra victory point. Yay! So let's say I built up there. All right, same individual. And so now, so there's a place down here available for Jen to build. But it's not as exciting as building on a mountain. But now, all the other mountains on the board, you got to clear the culture tokens out before you can build on them. So what does Jen want to do? I think she's going to go the other way. She's going to get herself some culture. So the, when you collect culture tokens, if you choose to build a building, you can only build one. Um, but if you choose to collect culture tokens, you can get as many culture tokens as boats you place. So I think Jen will take the... Hmm... Well, she wants to place two boats, because what she's thinking is, if she places one here and here, then both of these islands will be next, and she'll be able to get a pair, which means at the end of the first turn, she'll have a specialist. 
Um, so she wants to get two boats. She wants to go as quick as possible. So she'll go on ahead and say, I'm taking this one, which gives her a bamboo and a lumber. All righty. So that's that. And it's also going to let her swap the position of two culture tokens. I don't know if she's going to bother with that um, because there's already a pair right here next to each other. Although if she wanted to, she could say swap this green in here and then she could build out this way and get these two greens. But a pair of greens is the same as a pair of blues. So anyway, so Jen has um, taken her power. Now she can either buy or sell a boat. And you know what I think she will do? I think that she will, she will buy a boat. She's going to spend one gold to buy the cheapest type of boat, a bamboo. So now Jen has three ships she can deploy. She can save any of them for later, but she's going to deploy all three. And where's she going to go? She's going to go one, two, three, because she can't go this way because that's blocked. All right. So Jen's placed three boats. She's not going to build. And so instead, every um, island that was reached by what she placed this turn can now um, be grabbed. So Jen's going to grab all three of these culture tokens. And suddenly, boom, there are now three places to build. And this one is worth an extra point. But to build on this, there has to be, the, the only thing you can build on this island would be something that requires stone, lumber, or bamboo. And right now, there's not, none of the buildings that are out fit that description. So currently, none of these buildings can be built there. But remember, you have the opportunity to use a special power to move boats around. But we'll worry about that later. All right. So anyway, so Jen got herself a whole bunch of, or I'm sorry, this was... That was me. I built and got a victory point. Jen, she just got a whole bunch of culture. All right. So she didn't build anything. She didn't score any points. She got some culture. She's not storing any extra boats because she didn't have any. And now at the end of the turn, she will spend this pair to be the first to get a, uh, a, an assistant, a helper, a specialist. That's what they're called. So each one of them has different abilities. Now, first of all, they all have victory points they're worth. Uh, this one's worth one, one, two victory points. Or no victory points, no victory points. And as you might imagine, if they're worth less victory points, they have a more powerful use throughout the game. So which one does Jen want to take? This one lets her buy or sell two boats on a turn instead of one. Um, and if so, she needs a lot of boats and she could not get them um, from these things, hey, she could buy two boats or sell boats or, or sell one boat to make the money to buy a different boat. And it's worth one victory point. That's uh, Izanagi. Uh, Susanu, uh, Susanu, this one, it basically, if you sell stone or clay boats, they're worth more money. Clay is normally worth four and stone is worth three, but now they're worth two extra a piece. Uh, no, three extra a piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, now this is interesting. So this is a way to make more money. And money is worth um, points at the end of the game, five to one. But this character over here, um, uh, Fushi, he makes money at the end of the game three to one. So this and this combo really well together. Yeah, I think Jen likes that. I think Jen is going to recruit um, Fu Si. I, I, I think that's how you pronounce him. So Jen's now got a helper. And um, although he doesn't do anything for the whole game, at the end of the game, Jen's, Jen now wants to stockpile money like crazy because it's worth three to one instead of the normal five to one. OK. And uh, just like the buildings, these do not refill. And so, um, Jen, she did that. Now that's the end of her turn. So, it's my turn again. Now, if we were playing with three or four players, everybody only gets one turn per round. But in a two-player game, everybody gets two turns per round. So, where am I going to go? These things have been left for me. And I think I'm going to want this one. Because this will give me some more boats, and it will let me swap boats. Because I would love to build here and get more points off this mountain, particularly because I'd be building in a chain next to my existing building. But the buildings that are out, let's see, this one needs three bamboo. So I could do a swap and get a second bamboo on there, but that's no good. This one needs um, two gold and two red. That's not good. Ah, Let's see, and this one, both of these uh, fancy buildings need one of everything, and they're worth five points. Um, let's see, can I actually pull that off? That means I would have to have gold. Now, what am I getting if I come here? I'm getting a uh, green and a red. So, and that's interesting. If I want to put a boat here, it ha the first boat I have to expand either has to come on these wild card spaces where anything can go, or if you're expanding from an existing boat, it has to match. So only a black boat could come here, but then other colors could continue. Um, from here, uh, you only a green boat could expand, but then after you put a green, then you could expand with any color you want. Shoot. 
So, yeah, I would love to build here. And even if I take this power that lets me swap stuff around, based on the buildings that exist right now, I would not be able to claim it. So, do I build on this big empty space? Well, let's see. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am going to, yes, this is it. I'm going to go on ahead and take this power, which gives me a clay and a bamboo. All right, so I, and um, I'm going to have this, this swap ships later. Now, I could buy or sell a boat. Um, let's see. And I don't think I'm going to. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to buy or sell a boat. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go without it. I'm going to save my money for later. So I'm just done with that. Now I'm going to deploy boats. I'm going to um, deploy this green here because the first thing I have to place has to either be over here, in which case it can be any color, or it has to match. So a green matches a green. Now I can put this red down, and I will go on ahead and put it right there, let's say. All right, so now it, it, to here or here, we need to expand with the red ship, and then you can keep on expanding. So I have uh, deployed my ships, and now I'm going to use the special power of the tile I took that says whoop, whoop, swap two things, and now this island has three green boats around it, baby. And so um, rather than take some culture tokens, I am going to build another building. And so there's this one, which uh, requires three green. And now this is interesting. This is a trade house. It has a special power, which is the money I get off my chain is doubled. So I only get one point, but I'm going to get double the money I make for my chain. So let's see. I'm building here. Now, is it on a mountain? No. Is it next to one of the fancy places? No. So I don't get any additional points. But is it part of a chain? Yes. Normally this chain would give me two points, but because it was a trade house, it gives me four points. Boom. All right. And I made one point. I made. So I refilled my coffers. And um, and now I want to build another building down here or here because my chain is getting bigger and bigger. And remember, money is worth points at the end of the game. But you can also use money to buy ships that you weren't able to get that you need. Okay. So I went on ahead and built again after I used the fancy power of, of swishing stuff around. Now at the end of my turn, I don't have any boats left over to store. I don't have any culture tokens, so I'm not going to recruit uh, anybody. And so now it is Jen's last turn. She can be first player next turn and get one bamboo. Or, you know what? doesn't matter. Either one of these, whichever one she takes, she's going to be first player. Because what we're doing is, as we're claiming these, we are declaring turn order. So currently, six, nine, eight. So um, next round, Jen is going to go first and second. So this is interesting. Jen is going to get three turns in a row. She's about to take this turn, and because she's taken number one in the next round, you know, her worker is going to move up here to number one. And this one's going to move to number six. Mine's going to move to number nine and number eight. Now, we do all that at the end of the round, but as you can see, Jen's about to take a turn, and then in the next round, she's going to take two more turns back to back. So Jen gets three turns in a row, which is very powerful because that means she could really start thinking um, about taking three turns in a row. What um, boats does she buy? What boats does she claim? What powers does she use? Um, all to maybe build some really big, cool building or what have you. Well, it starts with, does she take um, a single bamboo or a slightly more valuable? Because remember, bamboo is worth one, the lumber is worth two, the slightly more valuable lumber, either way, she'll be first player, and this will give her no special power, this will let her claim a building. I think she'll take that. All right, so here she is. She takes a lumber building. Now, in a perfect world, Jen would like to claim another culture token, another green one, because then that means she would have another pair, which means before the round is out, she could have two helpers. And remember, she was thinking about this helper because the two money folks work really nicely together. So, where is a green? There's a culture down here. So, Jen could just stick with that one boat and deploy it over here and say, boom, I'm just going to take this green, not, and, and thereby creating another empty um, island that we can build on. Although the nice thing is, doing this down here, Jen's a bit worried because she's creating this nice place where I, I'm just making a chain of my buildings. If Jen does this down here, it can't be part of the, build, the chain I'm building. But also, Jen should decide, does she want another boat? Because uh, she could buy or sell boats now. Now, the interesting thing is, she's planning on this um, you know, uh, Fushi plus uh, uh, Susanu. The two of them scoring a lot of money for her, so she'll make a lot of points that way. So I don't think she necessarily wants to go buying boats right now. Although, if she did just spend one coin to buy a bamboo boat, let's say, because that's not too expensive, right? 
That's only a fifth of a point, although uh, for Jen, it's only a, it, that's a third of a point Jen's given away to buy that. But now she's got two boats. And remember, she can only buy or sell once, but this means uh, if she employs two boats, she can actually get two um, culture tokens. So if she goes, say, like this and then like this, um, boom, boom, she's got two culture. All righty, so there we go. And um, although in doing that, no, okay, hold on a second. What Jen will do, she will, um, she'll have gone from here to here, and she'll have taken this one. Okay. Although even still, yeah, no matter what, this is making more of a nice shape. But you know what? Jen could build buildings on these as well. Um, so anyway, now Jen took culture, which means she didn't get a chance to build. And oh, that's fine because none of these other things were buildable. Although Jen also gets to use special power, she can claim one of these. So she needs to start thinking about which of these can she build over time. Now, not, I mean, because none of these came out, um, four new tiles are going to come out, and suddenly we're going to start seeing tiles, uh, select tiles that start giving us gold. This thing needs two gold and two red. There's one red right there. If in the, going into the next round, Jen could get some red and some gold, she could maybe expand from that and build this. So does she want to claim this one, or does she want to claim either one of these gates that requires one of each? This is a little bit tougher to pull off, but it is worth six points instead of five. Hmm... Now, she doesn't have to, but, I mean, and because the thing is, if she doesn't get this built by the end of the game, she'll lose points off it. But, you know, it's early going. She's pretty confident she can get it built. What the heck? She's going to go in big. Go big or go home, says Jen. And uh, so she now has a target of building this thing by the end of the game. No one else can build it. All right. So she used the special power of that. She got her boat. She bought a second boat. She expanded. She got some culture. And now, at the end of her turn, um, if she had any extra boats, she would storm. She is going to spend... Again, another pair of culture, that's gone, and recruit a Susanu. And so she's now got her big money strategy in place. Sell boats to make money, and um, money is worth three to one instead of five to one. Although, there's kind of a hiccup there. Jen needs, um, she needs to sell red boats to make a lot of money. Every red boat she sells is basically worth two points to her. But by the same token, she needs these red boats to build this. You know what, actually... Not going big or going home. She'll take the easier one. Um, right, okay. So that was Jen's turn. At the beginning of the round, I built two things. Jen got a whole bunch of culture and got two special powers. This guy is worth a point, plus hopefully they'll work well together. And now we are done. At the end of the round, we refill. There's going to be new buildings that come out. Okay. And um, new specialists are going to come out, but before the new ones come out, the old ones become a bit more attractive. Each one of them gets two coins set on them. So now if you claim these in the future, not only do they give you their power and their points, they're worth money too. And then we bring new ones out to fill in the gaps. Uh, uh, Nakatsu, Nakatsu and Ryu. All righty. So... Uh, Ryu lets you store two boats at the end of a round, so you can save up a lot of navy, so you can make a really big move sometime. Um, this guy lets, if you ever get gold boats, you can trash them to get two other boats of your choice, two wild card boats, and he's worth two points. All right, so they came out, the new buildings came out, we now figure out turn order. Jin um, is first and second, and I am third and fourth. Now, I'm not saying I necessarily, oh, and um, all these tiles, are going away. So nobody took the number one, and uh, the new ones are going to come in. This slides over, and the ones that we uh, didn't do, they get shuffled up, so you don't know exactly what order they're going to be in. Boppity boppity bippity bop. So they'll be back, but we don't know exactly when they're going to come out. And we are now set up, ready to go for the second round. Jen already took one turn, she gets two more turns in a row now. And, as predicted, gold ship, you know, this one is gold. The special power of number five is get a gold ship, which are incredibly rare and valuable, and take one of these tokens and place it somewhere on the board, thereby declaring, like say right here, that that is a sacred site and you cannot build on it. So, Jen could use this to cut off my ability to expand my big chain. Uh, so, there's that power. This one is um, get a red boat, 
And, oh, what is that one? Oh, this one is t take an existing boat on the board and slide it. So use this uh, and it goes, hey, I'll slide over here and then I'll start building right off of that and you know, I've broken away, etc., etc. Uh, this power is destroy two boats, sink two boats, anywhere you want. If you can see that, you know, if Jen can see that, wow, I'm doing really well building over here and she doesn't want to build over there, she could take this and destroy a couple of boats, thereby limiting my ability to build. This one, get two boats and a wild card boat. This is the most powerful one in the game. That's why it's number 10. It means you will guarantee be last in the following round. And then we've still got our little guy over here who um, has not actually, uh, no one's taken yet. And then we've got this other one, which is get stone and look at the top three buildings and um, put them in any order on the top or the bottom. So you could start building now for what you know, what buildings you know are coming in future rounds. And then the rest are the ones we've all seen. Yep, yep, yep. So. That's a, uh, and, and now we're going to continue. Jen took three turns in a row, and I'm really starting to think she probably didn't take advantage of it, um, but she was just so keen, but she now has two turns, and she should not let me continue to run rampant and, um, you know, get all of these land. I mean, she should start building some land too, especially because she wants to cut off my chain that I'm building. So her first move might be to um, take this one, let's say, because she will cut this off so that I can't expand my chain here. And then if she herself builds into this space, my little guys are completely cut off. And now hopefully Jen can make her own chain down here. Now, if she was to do that, if she wants to build here, two bamboo and a, um, and a clay, or any of the buildings out there that need that. No, 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 not at all. Um, although the one she's done, this needs well, this needs one of everything, so that'd be kind of tough to build there as well. So if Jen's going to start building. But here's the other thing. If Jen just keeps on collecting culture tokens, she can recruit more people. And remember, there's now money. This is, um, this is two thirds of a point for Jen, plus the points she would get off of them. So maybe she wants to get somebody else. Um, like this one, the, uh, 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 Hetsuka, once per turn, Jen can trash one of her culture tokens and turn it into four bucks. And as you might imagine, that would work very well with Jen's little... Um, so for, if Jen wants to recruit uh, uh, Hetsuka at the end of her turn, she needs one more blue culture because then she has another pair. Are there any blue tokens anywhere? The closest one is way over here. So to get to that, Jen would have to expand one, two, three, which means she would actually get three tokens. Um, so she could get like uh, these two mauve or tannish ones and that. So that would give her two more pairs. Um, and again, she would have uh, cleared out three more buildings to build on. But she is worried about me just continuing to chain. So does she go for that or does she not worry? I mean, heck, she could get uh, Hetsuka later after more money has built up. But yeah, the buildings, what does she want to build? The easiest building to build, which is only worth two points, requires two lumber and a, what do you call it, a bamboo. Oh my gosh, look at that. On this island, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, Jen's going to build this building right here because everything she needs is already in place. Here's two lumber and a bamboo. I, of course, would love to build there because it would extend my chain and it would give me extra points, but I don't think so. That I took very big, powerful, slow action, so that's why Jen's going to get to do several things in a row. So, um, okay, so yeah, Jen's totally going to build there, but she's also going to place some boats that could help her on her next turn, so she can do a one-two. Um, so if she's going to build here, if she could build some boats that would let her build here as well, then she's cutting off the chain. Plus, if she can um, build here, then um, she's got a little chain. My chain, you know, before I get to take two turns in a row, she cuts this off so I can't continue chaining to get down into these buildings. So that would make sense. So what, did, what would she build here? Uh, again, she needs green and brown. She's taking the only green brown. There aren't going to be many opportunities to build. One more red and two gold would let her build there, or two gold. So how can she get gold? Hey, there's two opportunities for it. This one which gives her a gold and blocks a space off. This one which gives her two and a gold. I think, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Jen's next move is going to be right here. And, um, right, so this gives her, what is she doing? Ah, oh, but if she does it this way, She's planning on building here. If she builds way down here, these won't chain. They won't give her extra money. Shoot. But yeah, but to build this requires uh, clay and two gold 
And if she's doing this, all this lets her do is, oh no, she's doing this to get one of the gold. She's doing this to get the other gold she needs. Oh, but this lets her put clay. So, oh, if she puts the, um, you know, she would like to build here and here, ideally. She can't move this over here, but she's got two things to place. She needs to put two clay here, and then she needs to get, ah, uh, right, okay, shoot, shoot, shoot. So you can start to see how puzzly this game can get, especially when you're doing multiple turns in a row. And, you know, and again, if I'd been thinking about this harder, you know, Jen might have actually taken three turns in a row to do a really, to, you know, claim all three of these spots back to back. Because Jen has a lot of flexibility. She's the first to get both. She's going to get all the gold. She's totally going to take this and this. She is not going to let me get any of that gold. Um, because she'll be the first to use it. Um, that will give her access to these things. Also, let's not forget this. She might try to put two gold down to make this possible. And this as well. Um, because she needs to get this built by the end of the game. If she gets this built before she builds a regular building next to it, she'll get an extra point for building a regular building next to a super building. So there's those options as well. Whew. Okay, you know what, folks? I think I'm going to stop right there because hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of just how rich and complex. I, you know, I, I know some people would like me to do an extended playthrough, but oh, I, it's, believe me, this game. Well, I'll talk about my final thoughts, but I don't want you guys to have to watch me burn my brain for five minutes at a time as I try to work through and just say, oh, oh my gosh, I'm already starting to do it. So I'm just going to stop right there because that gives you an idea of all the core mechanics. The game continues until something runs out. Either somebody's buildings run out. If either of our buildings run out, that triggers the end. If um, all the specialists uh, run out, that triggers the end. If, what is the other thing? Oh, if all the buildings run out, that triggers the end. Or if any one color of boat runs out, because they're all out there, they've all been placed, that triggers the end. So once something runs out, we tally up however many buildings we've built. I've built a couple, Jen hasn't, plus all these uh, extra bonus points we've gotten, plus money, plus points off our specialists. Whoever has most points is the winner. And that, folks, is Yamatai. Now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.